IGCSC Geography, Economic Development and Industry. Globalization, Transnational Companies and Multinationals. The term globalization refers to any process of change operating on a world or global scale and having global or worldwide effects. There are three main forms of globalization. Economic, largely caused by the growth of multinational and transnational companies or corporations. Cultural, the impact of Western culture, art, media, sport and leisure activities. And political, the growth of Western democracies, their influence on co other countries, as well as the creation of international political organisations. The causes of economic globalisation include the growth of transnational companies, improvements in transport technology and transportation networks, allowing an increase of fast, efficient and relatively cheap movement of commodities and people around the world. Accelerating advances in ICT, information and communication technologies. This allows management decisions and information to be instantly communicated worldwide. And the formation and growing importance of regional economic or trading blocks, such as the EU or the NAFTA, the encouragement of free trade between countries for these blocks further breaks down economic barriers between companies. One of the main factors in cultural globalization is the growth of mass tourism and cheaper flights. More people are traveling and thus experiencing other cultures and then bringing elements of these cultures home at the end of their holiday this to an increase in international migration which sees millions of people moving and bringing their cultures to their new home, reversing the trend of Americanization which had, had been happening up until recently. Asian food, for example, is now very popular across Europe, while English has become the international lingua franca even though there are more Spanish or Mandarin speakers in the world. The international desire for peace, which is of course good for trade, has led to the development of political globalization and the formation of organizations like the EU, the UN, the WTO and NATO, which encourage political cooperation for both economic and military reasons. The impact of globalization is very obvious in the emergence of middle income countries and in the growth of transnational companies. Transnational companies are companies operating in more than one country. They have looked to lower income countries and middle income countries in order to cut their costs and increase their profits, leading to a process called global shift. This is because transnational companies are searching for the cheapest locations to manufacture and assemble components so that the low cost labor intensive parts of the manufacturing process are moved to the lower income countries where costs are much lower than in higher income countries. Transnational companies have become some of the biggest and most powerful companies in the world. Many have operating budgets and profits exceeding that of the GDP of many countries. They include large car manufacturing companies like Volkswagen from Germany, Toyota from Japan and General Motors from the USA, but also large clothing manufacturers such as Nike from the USA and Adidas of Germany, pharmaceutical companies such as GlaxoSmithKline in the UK and Switzer, Switzer of the USA, or food companies such as Nestle of Switzerland and Del Monte of the USA. Characteristically, the headquarters and research development activities of transnational companies are often in the HIC country of origin, while their manufacturing is often carried out in middle income countries and low income countries. Globally, they directly employ around 45 million people, provide jobs indirectly for millions more workers 
and control over 75% of global trade. There are obviously advantages and disadvantages of transnational companies locating in lower and middle income countries. Advantages include more people in employment and higher wages for those people than from their existing work. These people have an access to training and new technology, which means that they will improve their skills and expertise. On a countrywide level, there will be improvements to transport infrastructure, such as road and railways, as well as service infrastructure, like electricity, water supply and sanitation, leading to a rise in the standard of living. This happens because the people working in the transnational companies start paying taxes, and those taxes can be used to improve the standard of living. Improvements in public health services and education are also a consequence of this. The workers' income also benefits local businesses as they start to spend their money locally and may create more jobs and wealth. This is an example of the multiplier effect, which occurs when an initial injection of money into the local, regional or national economy causes a bigger final increase in the local, regional or national wealth. Disadvantages include the fact that the majority of profits may be taken out of the host country because they may not be required to pay high national or local taxes. There is obviously an exploitation of the local labour force who have long hours of work, very often for little pay. High skill jobs may go to outsiders and may not be passed on to the local population. Branch plants may close as other locations become more cost efficient and the resources that are being exploited may be dependent on world prices or demands and not local demands. People who work in the transnational companies may have poor work conditions where workers' health and safety may be com compromised. The loss of rural land or farmland for the building of new factories can put the local communities at risk. And a lack of local environmental laws and regulations can lead to severe air, land and water pollution. The Toyota Motor Company is a perfect example of a transnational company within the motor vehicle manufacturing industry. The Toyota Motor Company of Japan became the world's largest automobile manufacturer in 2012. In 2016, Toyota was narrowly overtaken by Volkswagen of Germany, with sales of 10.31 million automobiles against Toyota's 10.18 million. Toyota's sales span over 170 countries and the company has 53 manufacturing companies in 28 countries on six continents. In 2016, Toyota had over 344,000 employees worldwide and it was the 14th largest company in the world by revenue. Several of Toyota's manufacturing locations have taken advantage of government policies aimed at attracting the investment and jobs that a Toyota facility will bring to a country or region. Toyota does not simply have high-end functions in high-income countries and low-end production functions in LICs. It has research and development centers in the USA, Germany, France, UK, Spain, Belgium, Thailand, China and Australia in addition to its Japanese facilities. Toyota has a major impact on the economies of countries where it invests. Its US operations alone directly employ over 28,000 people worth nearly $2.3 billion to the US economy. However, Toyota indirectly contributed to the support of more than 365,000 other jobs and provided over $12 billion to the total US economy in 2016. Nike trainers and clothes are sold and worn throughout the world. Nike is a typical transnational corporation. Its headquarters are in the USA, 
where all the major decisions and research take place, yet its sports shoes are manufactured in many countries around the world. Black's main activities are in Southeast Asia, and up until recently it manufactured many of its trainers in South Korea. In the late 1980s, labour costs in South Korea rose, so Nike decided to move production to Indonesia, where costs were lower. Nike employs 30,000 employees across several factories in Indonesia, including factories in its capital, Jakarta. For more similar contact, follow Dara Cultural and Language Rooms on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Thank you. Until the next video. Bye.